Okay. Um, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for all these uh, nine months that have gone by. We thank you for this new month, Lord. That is, uh, Lord, that we have started today. We have entered into, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for this new day, Lord. We uh, we commit, uh, Lord, uh, the rest of these months of this year into your mighty hands, God. That we will continue to live for you, Lord, Father God. That we will continue to live for your purposes, Lord. And I just pray, God, that we will continue to, Lord, pursue your the plans that you have for us, the purposes that you have for us, Lord. And I pray that each one of us will be diligent to fulfill your plans and uh, carry out your will, Father God. Master, we, we ask, Father God, that uh, you will perfect that which concerns us today, Lord. Lord, things that need perfecting, things that need strengthening in us, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen. Lord, we pray that all our weaknesses will be overwhelmed by your strength, Father God, will be removed and, uh, Lord, uh, will be transformed, oh, Father God. I just pray, God, for, even for a closer walk with you, Master. Lord, we pray that our minds will be renewed to the truth of your word, Father God. We ask, O oh God, that your word will continue to be, O oh God, um, uh, in the center of our lives, Father God. And I pray for a rich deposit of your word in our spirit, O oh Father God. Lord, we pray that you will expand our spiritual capacity to receive more from you, Lord. Lord, we pray that even now, God, we pray that you will expand our spiritual capacities, O oh God, that we will go deeper, Lord, in our walk with you, Father God, that we will go higher in our walk with you, Master God, and that we will be, Lord, always walking closer, Lord, to your heart, O oh Father God, and close to you, Father God. Yes, Lord, we, we pray that our walk will be a walk of obedience, O oh God. Lord, that we will always choose to, Lord, uh, delight in your will and purposes, O oh Father God, that we will choose to delight in you, O oh Master God, and uh, that we will be obedient to your word and to your instruction, O oh Father God, however big or small it might be, Lord. And uh, Lord, we pray that we will choose to obey your word, Lord, not only when it's convenient or comfortable for us, Lord, and even, Lord, even at times when it's difficult, oh God, Lord, we pray that we will make it, uh, Lord, our... Uh, uh, make it a point, O oh God, to to follow through and to obey uh, every instruction, O oh God, Lord, that you place before us, O oh Master. Yes, Lord, we thank you that you have, Lord, uh, our best in mind, Father God, that you're a good God. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you came to give, give us life and life in its fullness, that you are our good shepherd. And so we, we just want to thank you this morning. We want to give you all the praise. We want to give you all the glory this morning, O oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Let's. Um, okay. We're almost at the end of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, right? Um, we are in chapter 15, and uh, we, I think, we went up to verse 28 in the last uh, class. Um, Verse 28, chapter 15. So chapter 15, um, just a quick review. Uh, Paul talks about uh, the gospel that he preaches and how he received it. And, uh, and, he, and he goes on to say, this is the gospel that I received and I preach by which you are saved. And in uh, 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 following that, he talks about the, uh, the proof, the uh, proof of a resurrection. Like who are the eyewitnesses of the resurrection that we see in the first few verses? Um, that uh, that he was uh, he he was he died and he was buried and uh, he rose again and he was seen by all these wit eyewitnesses and he also talks about his encounter and uh, and then he says you know um, I'm the least of the apostles but his grace God's grace worked in me and I also worked labored all the more because of the grace of God. I in fact he says I labored more than they all uh, because of the grace of God in 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 me right and uh, and then he addresses the whole issue of um the teaching or the belief that was uh, that was there in the in, in the Corinthian church or in that circle that um people do not rise again or you know there is no resurrection from the dead so he goes on to address that he talks about that and he says um you know uh, this this is this is the thing if 
you are saying that there is no resurrection from the dead then you know that christ is not resurrected and we are false witnesses um and because we are saying that something happened which when it actually didn't happen and we are saying it happened because of god and we are actually you know we are making god uh, whatever uh, a false witness uh, for god and uh, and then he talks about uh, he also talks about the fact that uh, everything is hopeless and futile right because if there is no resurrection for the dead and the, the kind of life that we live if it is only for this life on earth then it is really you know we are the most pitiable of people and uh, there is there is uh, there is no hope right if we have hope only for this lifetime then you know we are most pitiable it is futile and everyone who has um, uh, made a decision for christ and has died has actually lived there in vain you know they have perished and uh, then he talks about the resurrection you know if, if christ is risen from the dead uh, that is from verse 20 uh, then we will also live okay by adam all die and by uh, through christ everyone will be made alive and he talks about the lord jesus being um, the first fruits meaning something that um, uh, we looked at that word aparchi um, which means the beginning uh, of something new right uh, let me just uh, read out that uh, um, that particular word um, aparchi i mean it means, it means the a new beginning a beginning of something right and and then he says if christ is first fruits then which means that we will also follow right and uh, uh, and he talks about how uh, the, about the millennial reign of christ and all authority will be put under his feet and death itself right so talks about the resurrection from the dead and also talks about that, uh, that the lord jesus will reign over all and the last enemy death itself will be brought uh, under the feet of jesus right he will defeat or he has defeated it but then that it itself will be destroyed and that we see in verse 26 right the last enemy that will be destroyed is death okay so today let's look at um, uh, verse 29 from verse 29 onwards okay um, and then we will um, go on to the end of the chapter okay verse 29 otherwise what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all why then are they baptized for the dead um, so he's addressing a top uh, you know addressing a, a custom or something that was done during that time and he's talking about uh, addressing a group of people uh, who who actually are indulging in some kind of a baptism for the sake of the people who are dead so these people who are alive are take are being baptized for the sake of those who are dead so it was uh, it is some custom that is there and he's saying you know what will they do referring to somebody who is not part of the church but seems to be a cult tradition or custom what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all so he's he's not encouraging that like we looked at uh, like we studied last class he's not encouraging that custom he's not um, you know uh, um, he does not he's not establishing that teaching he's saying you know he's not uh, um, saying that the church should practice that such things. but he's saying he's just addressing that because uh, you know even they are hope that the dead will rise okay so that is that seems to be their hope that uh, that the dead will rise so um, you know and and he talks about uh, so he's still addressing the whole thing of resurrection from the dead right so he talks about how um, uh, his life is in danger he's, he's, he's he says in, he's stand we stand in jeopardy was 30 he we stand in jeopardy every hour and then uh, you know if uh, if there is no resurrection from the dead then let's uh, you know let's just eat and drink for tomorrow we die and that's the end of it all and then he issues the warning saying do not be deceived do not be deceived uh, because you have this faith but if there is evil company you know if if you are keeping company with people with 
such beliefs right if there is evil company which which means that the the company of the people uh, uh, who do not believe in these things right and probably who who are uh, you know who, whose mindset and everything is bent on doing things that are not good who are evil right evil company corrupts good habits there there will be a they will influence you and there will be a corruption of everything that you live for you know it it becomes corrupt uh, it uh, you know corruption meaning there is decay and uh, something when you say corrupt you know it's like rust uh, when there's metal and there's iron and because of moisture it becomes uh, corrupt it becomes rusted right and then it becomes weak it starts falling away it becomes weak and uh, and it just breaks and if there's any anything that's um, uh, you know any food items we keep it over a period of time outside it becomes uh, it the decay sets in right it becomes decayed and uh, ultimately it's it's useless um it has to be thrown away so saying that evil company has that kind of a influence there is a corruption of everything that um, you know to be true and uh, you are living a good uh, a life you have good habits but there will be a corruption of that there because of the evil influence so so he's saying do not be deceived don't deceive yourself uh, this will happen you know uh, what is it i think we might say okay no it's it's okay it's fine uh, i will be fine it, it's it's you know nothing will happen right and so he's saying don't be deceived don't be deceived evil uh, uh, company will corrupt good habits uh, awake to righteousness and do not sin for some do not have the knowledge of god i speak this to your shame so he's saying awake to righteousness don't continue in sin or do not sin okay so verse 35 onwards okay but someone will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come foolish one what you sow <clears throat> is not made alive unless it dies and what you sow you do not sow that body that shall be but mere grain perhaps wheat or some other grain but god gives it a body as he pleases and to each seed its own body all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of animals another of fish and another of birds and there are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another there is one glory of the sun another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead the body is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body and so it is written written the first adam became a living being the last adam became a life giving spirit however the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual the first man was of the earth made of dust the second man is the lord from heaven as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as is the heavenly man so also those who are heavenly and we and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man so um let's look at verse 35 onwards right so he's, he's addressing a question you know pr probably somebody would ask a question um you know uh, but how are the dead raised up how are the dead raised up with what what body do they um they come out with what is the kind of body right they have 
um, then he goes on to say that you know what you sow is not made alive unless it dies okay so he's talking about the sowing and reaping he's talking about um you know uh, in a garden or in a farm this is how it happens um that there is a uh, grain which is sown and the body which is sown is different from the what comes out of it right what comes alive of it so uh, the the grain or if it's a wheat or corn or whatever if it's sown um then it is it is very different it is sown of seed but then something happens and because of uh, uh, of the potential in that that very grain or uh, seed um, it grows and when it grows and comes out of the earth it is it no longer rep, you know it, it's uh, it's very different from the way it is sown okay from from the the kind of seed it was when it was sown so um it says god gives it a body as it pleases so different kinds of seed and when they when they grow up as a plant it is it is very different god gives it a body as it pleases and also talks about the flesh you know there is a, a different kinds of flesh in the sense the, the the flesh of the human being is different from that of uh, an animal uh, or a bird or a fish right? and uh, in fact uh, uh, scientists have testified to that that it's it's not the same you know the texture is different the the kind of tissue and everything is is different right so the human being so uh, paul is talking about the kind of differences uh, there are and also about the heavenly you know like the star or the moon and the sun and saying that um, the the glory of the sun is different from the glory of the moon and so on so and he's tying that to the resurrection of the dead and he's saying so also the resurrection of the dead the body is sown in corruption in a sense when when, when a person is dead then obviously there is corruption you know there is decay that sets in to the body uh, it's because things have stopped functioning the organs have stopped functioning so there is obviously there is decay in the body it's no longer living it's dead so it is sown in corruption but it is raised in in corruption so the the body that is resurrected is one that does not see decay right so that is how it is so it is addressing the question how are the dead raised up with what body do they come out okay you're saying there is a resurrection from the dead so you know what kind of body will they have so he's saying this is what it will be it is sown in in, in corruption meaning there is decay and it has limitations you know it is vulnerable to sickness and and all those kind of things but it is raised in in corruption okay and uh, it says it is sown in weakness and raised in power right sown in dishonor raised in glory okay, this, is, this is how it is it is sown a natural body but it is raised a spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body right uh, so he, he's saying you know when you sow it, it it is a natural physical body but when it when it's raised up resurrected it is a spiritual body so so uh, so the fact is that uh, you know it is made of a totally different material uh, it is spirit but still it's a body you know, we need to understand that so you know this is giving us an understanding okay it is a spiritual body which means it's not like you know something without shape or you know like smoke or anything like that or a, like a mist you know the resurrected body is uh, it's a body which means it's it definitely has shape and so on but it is spiritual it is not a natural body okay and then he goes on to say you know so it is uh, and so it is written the first man adam became a living being the last man last adam or referring to the lord jesus became a living uh, life giving spirit okay we have life uh, uh, through the last adam the lord jesus the the first man was of the earth like he was from the dust he was uh, he was made he was created from the earth the the uh, god actually created he uh, he made clay he shaped and he breathed and he became a living being right um but the second man is from the from uh, is the lord from heaven 
Okay. And as was the man of dust, we are all like that. The man of dust returns to us and died, returned to the earth. So also our physical bodies. We are from the dust, we will go back to dust. Right. And and but it's a beautiful and as is the heavenly man, which is uh, verse 48, second part of it, and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus, he, uh, uh, when he is resurrected, we see that he's the first fruits, right? He's the first fruits of, um, of, of creation, first fruits, um, uh, uh, which means that is the start of a, of a beginning, a new beginning. And we are, we as um, uh, people who have trusted in the Lord, and we also will be raised up in similar manner. Okay. So what kind of a body did the Lord have when he was raised up, uh, when he was resurrected? He had a, you know, he had a body which was different from the one which was actually buried. Uh, how different was it? Well, he appeared, you know, in a closed room, uh, even though there were walls and doors and everything was closed. You know, he appeared in the midst. Um, and he would disappear. He would appear and uh, and so on. But, but still, people could rec recognize. Right? They they saw that he was a, a Lord. So it was a glorified body. It was a body which was uh, which was without any corruption. Um, so so also saying we shall bear the image of the heavenly man just as in the natural we bore the image of the uh, man of dust adam so also in the resurrection we'll bear the image of the heavenly man lord jesus okay um, verse 50 now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does corruption inherit incorruption Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trumpet, trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay. So um, he goes on to uh, teach further about the resurrection. And uh, in doing so, so firstly, he says, you know, in the resurrection, uh, the, we will have a, uh, it won't be the same kind of body that we have now. It will be a glorified body. It will be a spiritual body. It will be different. Like it's an incorruptible body. right? So glorified, spiritual, incorruptible. It's different from the one which is so. But at the same time, we understand that we'll be able to recognize, you know, all this we understand from what he sh shares, that we will also bear the image of the heavenly man, that we will be like the Lord bear the image of the Lord, just like how we were like Adam, you know, um, uh, because we came from Adam, just like we were like Adam and uh, the man of dust um, and all the limitations and everything, right? Uh, we, all the incorrupt, all the corruption we also inherited. But in the same way, we will bear the image of the heavenly man. Okay, so that's that's good news. In the resurrection, this is how it will be. Then he says, uh, in verse 50, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, the kingdom of God, uh, flesh and blood, meaning that which is of 
the natural uh, cannot inherit nor does corruption uh, in corruption okay? so because flesh and blood is corrupted uh, by sin uh, there is uh, you know there is in uh, there is corruption there is decay there is uh, all kinds of weaknesses and everything but uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit god therefore uh, we are resurrected and we will have glorified bodies and uh, and the kingdom of god is uh, you know, that which is of the spirit that which is of the spiritual nature uh, gets to inherit the kingdom of god right uh, and then uh, he goes on to say that we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed like for those of those who are living those who are still alive um those who are not those who are alive at the coming of the lord um uh, says you know the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed okay so those who are dead will be raised incorruptible but those who are uh, those who are still alive we shall be changed the the bodies will change there will be a change okay for this corruptible must put on in corruption okay and this mortal must put on immortality okay so uh, mortal means something that has a, a, a end okay something that has an end end date an expiry date that you know you continue to live on to uh, live on and on right? there's no you're not mortal uh, or right? there is no um, coming to an end but you continue on right? immortal eternal right so um so uh, paul says that uh, this mortal must put on immortality okay um which is ever lasting uh, and uh, the greek word used there is athanasia okay athanasia um which means which is uh, you know there is no death or deathless okay so so he says that uh, this is what must happen that uh, immortality will be swallowed up as to put on immortality and then will come the saying you know death is swallowed up in victory or death where is your sting or hades where is your victory it's a cry of victory it's a shout of victory because uh, you know uh, everything that death seemed to have brought uh, there what everything over uh, over which that death seemed to have victory uh, as bring brought to an end that victory and oh hades you know hades where is death where is your sting and the painfulness of uh, death and this uh, everything is ended right um verse 56 the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law right so what happens is that the law uh, brings everyone under or covers everyone under sin right so because the law is perfect and holy and uh, so there's no person who can actually keep the law and continue to keep the law because um, person sins in one of that right so uh, the strength of sin you know in a way if you want to, you know is, is the law where everybody is brought under that it's the law seems to be the like the strength of sin and the sting of death is sin you know the the painfulness of death now, what is that the actual thing that brings about death the sting of death uh, is actually sin okay now what happens is the lord has won the victory over sin and death so therefore you know, you know the victory cry where is or oh, oh, death where is your sting and hades where is your victory okay so there is there is total victory that the lord jesus has given us as believers and even the victory over death right so uh, what happens because of death that our bodies are buried and the body see decay and decomposition and everything comes to an end uh, that even that 
is made victorious because of the Lord, that we will bear the image of the heavenly man, right? That we, um, uh, we are victorious in that because of the Lord's victory, right? So um, thanks be to God, verse 57, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Now, that victory is given to us because of the Lord. Okay, whatever was there, whatever uh, failure or, you know, which came into our life because of sin, right? Whatever decay or corruption which came into our life because of sin, whatever um, we can say, uh, you know, whatever the sin, sin brought into our lives, right? Whatever, um, you know, the uh, uh, damages of sin, whatever damage that the sin brought into our lives. Now that has been reversed, that is changed because of the Lord's work, the victory that God, uh, that we have, uh, that is brought to us, that is given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, therefore, verse 58, he encourages the church and he's saying, therefore, my beloved brethren, you know, this, you know, this is the end. Okay. This is um, the end that is, uh, that is uh, desired by the Lord. That is the victory that is given to you by the Lord. Okay. Even death is not victorious. Even death is not final because there is the resurrection. And in the resurrection, this will be the state of your body. And we will bear the image of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, he says, be steadfast. Okay. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So be steadfast, be strong, be, uh, be rooted, be strong, be established, be rooted. Do not be shaken. Um, steadfast, immovable, always abounding. Okay. So that's the thing. It says, Always abounding. Um, continue to abound. Continue to be, uh, you know, let there be abundance uh, in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. So uh, so these three things that he says, uh, you know, you, be, you, you abound in the work of the Lord. You be immobile. You be um, steadfast. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Okay, so don't be discouraged. The work that you do, the ministry that you do, the work of the Lord that you do is not in vain. Right? It's not a waste. It's not futile. Okay, because the uh, thing is, because of that kind of belief that uh, hey, there is no resurrection, uh, it's possible that people were being dis discouraged, you know, uh, some kind of teaching happening that there is no resurrection. So if there is no resurrection, then, you know, what is the point of all this? What is the point of ministry? What is the point of I me mean, living like this and, and all that? So it says there is a resurrection. There is going to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the rule and reign of Christ. And there is going to be change to our bodies when we are resurrected uh, from the dead. And those who are alive, this will be the change. Uh, to their bodies and therefore you know uh, be strong be steadfast be uh, immobile abounding in the work of the lord let there be an abundance of you know effort and that you will put, see the fruit of your efforts abounding in the work of the lord knowing that your labor is not in vain okay your labor the work that you do is not in vain um, you know when it comes to um, uh, the resurrection and uh, um, and how it will happen. We see a similar thing in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay, uh, So to them also, the Thessalonian church also, uh, Paul writes the similar similar thing. Right? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13, if we read, um, says, uh, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so god will bring with him those who sleep in jesus for this we say to you by the word of the lord that those who are alive 
and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds we to, to meet uh, in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So here again, he's talking about uh, what will happen in the resurrection and uh, and what will happen to those who are dead, uh, who have died in Christ, and what will happen to those who are still living at the coming of the Lord. Okay, so we see uh, both of it being mentioned here. Okay, so any any questions or any doubts? In chapter 15, um, so it's a excellent you know place to go where is uh, to um, to study uh, about the resurrection and uh, we see um, this topic of resurrection about the first Adam about the last Adam um, and everything uh, being very clearly explained here right okay so any um, any questions any doubts or anything that you want to share um okay so did you understand uh, why it says you know the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law right the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law uh, I hope we we understood that, right? Um, if you if you still need any clarity in that, you know, uh, is there anyone who uh, has who needs clarity about that particular verse? Okay, right. And uh, of course, um, you know, you you would have studied a similar thing in Romans also. You know, when in in Romans, in Galatians, uh, specifically in Romans, uh, about the law. No, uh, what is the purpose of the law? Well, Paul writes, you know, what is the purpose of the law? Why is the law given? And how, uh, you know, the law is good, but, um, and how it brings everyone, you know, under this whole category of, you know, sin, right? Because uh, uh, the, the law puts everyone under the banner of sin. It says, okay, you are sinful because you didn't keep the law. No, this is the law. You didn't keep it. So therefore you are, sinful um so uh, the strength of sin is a law okay and the sting of death the painfulness of death the the attack of death is sin itself you know the all because that sin brings about death sin brings about sin opens the door and it is uh it is like the sting of death right but both sin and death the source and the outcome, the consequence, the Lord Jesus won a victory because he carried sin upon himself on the cross and he rose again from the dead. Therefore, um, he destroyed sin and the consequence of sin, both he destroyed on the cross, Okay, um, which is what we see in Romans uh, chapter 6, Okay, uh, maybe I'll just read that. Um, Romans chapter 6. Um, do you not know, 6 and verse 3, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by um, th uh, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. For if, if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, the body of sin might be destroyed, done away with, put away, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Okay, so so this is uh, 
this is what has happened uh, both to the body of sin and uh, and to death itself because of the resurrection okay right so the encouragement be steadfast immovable always abounding let there be an increase an ever increasing in the work of the lord and don't uh, don't think that it's a waste because there is a hereafter there is a resurrection and uh, you will be you know there is a, the reward of uh, of ministry and so on okay okay let's look at verse uh, sorry chapter 16 i think we have a few moments so let's uh, go to 16 okay uh, chapter 16 talks about uh, the uh, some aspects some uh, aspects about money about what should be done uh, and uh, and also um, you know uh, some instructions right regarding it regarding collection regarding uh, you know giving to the poor and so on so uh, let's look at that okay um, and then he closes with some uh, greetings um, and some instructions right okay chapter 16 verse 1 now concerning the collection for the saints as i have given orders to the churches of galatia so you must also do on the first day of the week let each one of you lay something aside storing up as he may prosper that there be no collections when i come and when i come whomever you approve by your letters i will send to bear your gift to jerusalem but if it is fitting that i go also they will go with me okay so um so paul here is saying you know uh, several things we see that uh, uh, he's encouraging the churches to uh, to set aside he's encouraging the believers sorry the church to set aside some money for people in need in jerusalem okay so um, and he's saying that uh, this was something that he did with uh, the galatian church also and he says you know i have given these kind these instructions uh, in galatia churches of the galatian region also and so uh, he's saying you know you take up these collections special collections uh, for the people who are needy and we see you know it the need could have been because of famine we read in the book of acts um, and wherever they went they they did uh, take up uh, you know an offering for that towards that right it could be because of uh, famine and people were suffering and uh, people had needs so uh, for the needy people in jerusalem there was uh, this kind of an aid financial aid that was collected and given okay now um, so you, one of the things we see is that uh, you know on the first day of the week uh, let each of you lay something aside so there was this gathering the people uh, the the believers had started gathering on the first day of the week you know which is uh, not the sabbath not uh, on the sabbath day but the first day so there had been a shift uh, about the day when they were gathering for worship right the sabbath was obviously you know the the saturday uh, but they were gathering on sunday uh, and uh, they that, that change had happened right so they were meeting and uh, and he's saying you know when you when you meet um you set aside some of this uh, some of the money so that there is no collection we don't have to uh, collect specifically when when i come okay um so we see this about the church that uh, they were meeting on sundays and uh, the first day of the week and they were stopped uh, you know obviously they stopped observing the the sabbath uh, and uh, so they also brought their contribution okay on the first day of the week they also brought their contribution so he's saying as you bring the contribution to the you know to the church and to the work of ministry you set aside this amount of money for the collection okay and um, the other thing that he says is that uh, whomever you approve by your letters i will send to bear your gift okay now from among you if there is uh, someone whom you approve whom you think is a good person faithful dependable uh, whomever you approve you know there is a need there but whom whomever you approve and you choose 
we will send the gift through that person okay uh, and the reason for him to say that is that uh, he doesn't want anybody to point fingers at him and say you know, we gave the money to you we don't know what happened to the money how you used we don't know right so he's saying you know let it be someone whom you trust let it be someone whom you choose and we will say we will send the money through uh, through him okay uh, verse 4 but if it is fitting that i go also they will go with me you know but if it is uh, if it is so that i i'm also you know since i'm also going there uh, they will accompany me so but he's making it very clear that you know it's it's best if someone comes if someone they choose uh, uh, they that person handles the money and that person uh, gives the money right so um, so Paul's thing is that uh, the ministry should not be blamed. Uh, the ministers should not be blamed. Okay, so that's something for us to uh, for us to understand and also for us to learn and to put in practice. Right? What are some things that we can put in practice so that um, you know there is no pointing of fingers, there is no blaming uh, the ministry or the church uh, when it comes to these kind of matters. What are the safeguards that we can? practical safeguards that we can take when it comes to uh, money, when it comes to handling money, when it comes to um, uh, using the money, right? Um, so I'm sure you must be studying in church administration, right? All these things, being accountable, being transparent, um, being responsible, recording everything that comes in, recording everything that goes out, you know, how you, um, uh, like there is a record, uh, of the money coming in and there is a record of money going out money that is uh, contributed and money that is spent okay income and expense there is a record of it and that record being made transparent right um, so you put it up uh, somewhere where people can see either a register either a, you know maybe on a, a report on a website or something like that so there is transparency and um, and also people know that it's it's put to good use and and these are the ways in which it is used and so on so when, when it comes to handling he's saying you know i'm not going to take it but uh, the person whom you trust and choose let that person take okay then now i will come to you when i pass through macedonia for i am passing through macedonia and it may be that i will remain or even spend the winter with you that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay for a while with you if the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Okay, so uh, so he says, uh, okay, this is uh, what I'm planning to do. I'm, I, I don't want to uh, visit now, but when I pass through Macedonia, I will come and I will visit you, and I will, you know, uh, I will stay, uh, maybe spend the winter there, and then you could, you know, I will be on my journey, and you could send me, you know, wherever on my journey, wherever I may go. Um, and then he, he says, you know, uh, I hope to stay with you, in verse seven, if the Lord permits you know if it is the will of god i'm not really sure what will happen but about the travel but you know if it is the will of god you know then you know i i wish to travel this way or stay with you this way um but i will tarry in ephesus he says uh, about his plans uh, in ephesus and he says a great and effective door an opportunity to minister has come in Ephesus, a great and effective door is open to me, and there are many adversaries. Okay, so now something that we understand, learn is also that just because there is an open door, just because there is an opportunity to minister, um, does not mean that there will not be any resistance, right? That there will not be any adversaries, right? There may not be any resistance or attack or. Uh, it is a great opportunity, but along with that also come the adversaries, uh, right? So, okay, we'll stop here and then we'll we'll finish the chapter when we get back after the break. <laughs>